welcome back to another Bible study Saturdays. We have our guest here, Brother Gio. Today we'll be diving into John chapter 7. Um, we're going to do f- from verses 1 to verses 13 and then continue the rest for next week. Um, episode of um, Bible study. To begin, we'll do a prayer by me and then to end off, we'll do a prayer by Brother Gio. If you guys just like and enjoy this video. Father God, as we come, God, we just praise you. We worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and be glad it, God. We just thank you for a roof over our head and food on our table, God. We just pray as now as, but as we came together to be able to do this Bible study, God. We pray that the key information and the key understanding that we need to learn from what this chapter is saying, God, that you'll be able to help us learn it, God. We'll be, I pray that you'll be able to help us to point out the key information that we may not realize, but God, we just pray that we'll just let this go smooth and continue to build each other, God. Iron, sharpen iron, God, so we can be able to grow more and have a better understanding of your word, God. We love you and I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> All right. So we wrapped up last week, or the last time, rather, um, chapter six with um, Jesus saying that he knows that somebody's going to betray him. Um, and then we get right into it in chapter seven, right? It says, after these things, Jesus walked into Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Or uh, that Jewry is, uh, another word is uh, Judea, right? Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Um. That's your homework to find out what's the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay. So next time we get on, I want you to tell your viewers what the Jewish Festival of Tabernacle or the Feast of Tabernacles are. I haven't paid too much attention when I looked at that because I was like, I had a feast and I just, I was like, okay, they had a feast and just went on to the next page. Yeah, a lot, a lot of these things come from the Old Testament when something, when God did something great for them. They did it as a memorial um, um, or something to memorize what God did for them, similar to like how we do communion today. Um, okay. Same thing, it's to remember what God did on the uh, on the cross for us. Wait, I'm sorry. No. With the Jews, they don't believe that like Jesus came in the form. Because when I was reading chapter seven, like that was one of the big arguments. Some people was like, you know what? This is the Messiah. And some people were like, nah, the Messiah don't come out of Galilee. The scripture says that the Messiah came out of Bethlehem. He came out of, with the tribe of um, King David. And they was expecting him to come in this whole grand entrance, just appear and they don't know where he come from, but then Jesus is like, you know where I came from. It, so like, I, I don't understand how they have a feast like that when, like, or am I wrong? Like, I'm just making sure. Cause from my- they, they, they don't believe that, they don't believe that the man Jesus that walked the earth is the Messiah, right? Just like you said, because they, they felt like it was gonna be this grand entrance, this 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 king and shining, this knight in shining armor, you know, like, See, they they really they judge people from the outside, and that that was part of their issue. And likewise, it's still our issue today, right? We we don't judge people for what's on the inside, and that's how J- God gauges who we are, what position or what condition is our heart in towards Him, right? And so, I'll give you a little. Um, I guess a little prelude to the Feast of the Tabernacles. Um, It says it's a Jewish holiday held in the fall to celebrate the gathering of the harvest as well as the Jewish exodus from Egypt. It's almost like our Thanksgiving, right? About the harvest. But I mean, Thanksgiving is celebrated for a whole nother reason. But the way we celebrate it now, like present day, we gather with families and everybody get around to eat and have fun. But 
similar to what they do for the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Okay. But if you want to look a little bit more deeper into that, um, next week I want you to come back with the Feast of Tabernacles. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. You just have verse 3. Okay. Yep. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works of thou that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to thy to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify of it, that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up into, unto this feast. I go, not, I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet full come. When he, said, when he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. So, any idea what's happening? Yes. Because, when I, like I said, I read the King James Version just to make sure, because I like to make sure I still dabble in the King James Version, but I was not understanding that. Either. So when I went into, um, because I, I took I took so much notes on this chapter. Um, when I went into NLT, I really understand it. Um, so with the Feast of Tabernacle, they all, Jesus and his brothers were supposed to go, but Jesus was like, no, I can't go because um, from the previous chapter, you could, you um, knew that the um, Pharisee, was planning to kill to kill Jesus. And if somebody planning to kill you, clearly not going to go in an open sight. That would make sense. So he was like, you know what? No, I can't go. The world want to kill me, but they don't want to kill you. So y'all go ahead. But Jesus just still went secretly. He still went secretly, but he wasn't, it wasn't in an open eye. Like nobody knew he was dead. Right. It wasn't, it wasn't his time to do certain things. Um, this is this. So, what Jesus is saying pretty much is, um, he he understands that he came with a purpose for a purpose, and that purpose was to not to condemn the world, but for him to come into the world that people may believe in him and have everlasting life. But he also understood that his ministry on earth had a an expiration date and his goal was to reach significant people specific people people targeted by the father so that they in turn would be like a uh, um like a fire um in the forest where you light one tree and because it's next to the next tree it just keeps going and that was his goal so in order to do that he actually actually make it to the forest. He actually actually have to make it to the location, that specific person that he needs to target to give them the word for it to be downloaded into their heart, for them to believe in their mind and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord. So there were certain places he couldn't go, certain things he couldn't do. And he was really intentional about where he went and who he spoke with and who he encountered. He's saying it's not yet his time. So Jesus is full aware that his time, meaning his time to be betrayed, his time to be um, crucified on the cross, that time has not yet come. So he can't go certain places. How does this tie to us? This ties to us in the sense that we have to realize ourselves that we too have a purpose, right? We're here with a purpose for a purpose. And we have to be mindful of the places we go, things we do, the people we meet, the things we say, right? What we do should be in alignment with the will of the Father. So when we wake up in the morning, first thing we should probably be doing, highly recommended, good morning, Father. We're sitting at his feet. You woke me up this morning, you made this day, and you allowed me to see this day. So what is it that you want from me? Because here I am and total obedience unto you. What What is it to talk to me, Father? What, whatever you want me to do. 
right? I'm still going to carry out my, if I go to, go to work, I got to go to school, you know, but while I'm there, while I'm on my commute to school or commute to work, while I'm, um, you know, uh, while I'm in class or while I'm on the job or what have you, what is it that I can do for you? All right? Can I share the word of God with somebody or can I hold the door for somebody, you know, or can I say good morning to somebody? Holy Spirit, walk with me. Lead me and guide me. Be real strategic and intentional about hearing the voice of God and being led by him. And of course, being obedient when he tells you what to do. Cool? Cool. Cool. So um, it says, but when his brethren were gone up, he went, then went he also up into the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret, right? So now Jesus uh, is tiptoeing around the crowd, moving real silent. Right, real G's moving silence like lasagna. That's Jesus right now. <laughs> All right. It says then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. For some said, He is a good man, others said, Nay, but he deceived deceiveth the people. Howbeit no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. So now Jesus is amongst the crowd, right? Yep. And they're looking for him. Uh, I believe his disciples are there at the feast. Yeah, they're there. Like, all right, so his, his man's in them is here. So where he at? Yeah. <laughs> where he at? Like, and Jesus is, like, Jesus is in disguise. Like, he's not there openly. And he just want to hear what people are saying. And what he finds out is that some people are, you know, under their breath speaking to each other real low about, yo, yeah, Jesus is a good man. Someone's like, nah, no, you're not. He's here to deceive people. But what Jesus is really trying to figure out is why aren't they speaking openly, loudly, boastfully? Like, why aren't they saying it with their chest about how they feel about Jesus? Why is it a secret? Yeah, they scared. Because um, I don't understand, like, why the Pharisee, that whole government act like that, because... Like if you're surrounded, if your whole um life purpose is to serve God, everything you do is pretty much surrounding God, and you know what the scriptures say. I don't understand why you put a fear into your heart because it's not your job to put fear in nobody's heart. Like that's not that's not our job. It's not our job to over and declare like whether this person is bad or not. That's all up to that's all up to God. That's what and when I was reading this chapter, that's one thing I just didn't understand, like why that whole leadership was like that. You know by this time it's gotten to a point where they're allowing their power, their success, their culture to take advantage of the laws that God gave Moses, right? And now they're like, they're using their position and their status to, I guess, boost them higher in society so that people can look up to them, right? And that, and that wasn't the goal or the intention of the Moses, the law that God gave Moses, or known as the Mosaic law. You know, it, 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 that was never their intention. But some way, somehow, there, you know, you have the high, the highest of the highs. You have the people up there in the status, like, you know, the rich and the wealthy. And, and it, they use their power to kind of prey on the weak and, 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 and whatnot. So that's, that's pretty much what we have here. But these people are, I want to get back to the point, the part where people who believe in God are whispering about him. People who think that he's a good man are whispering about him. Are you afraid to tell people you're Christian? Yeah. Can you go outside, say at one o'clock in the afternoon and scream out, I love Jesus. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. The people say it loud, them. say it proud. I, I really do that. I want to go, I really go outside and do that. Cause I'm not back like, when I was younger, I, I used to kind of, like, be afraid of it. Well, not kind of. I used to be afraid to, like, tell people about it. 
But like now at this point, I really don't really don't care too much of what people really think. So I I be doing me. And you can tell about like my accent, like I don't really care. Like I do me. <laughs> Yeah. Like, like, are you an undercover Christian? All right, that's that's what this is. Pretty much, that's what, that's what I want to call it. Are you an undercover Christian? No, everybody around me know. They know what I stand for. Yeah. Are you an undercover Christian? No. That that's 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 what Jesus is wondering about. I think that's the concern that that Jesus is worried about. Like, why why are people? It says, verse thirteen it says. How is it that no man speaks openly about me for fear of the Jews? Like, are they that afraid of these Jewish people? That they can't even speak about me knowing that they believe about me? I mean, when you put fear in, in people's heart to a certain extent, you can pretty much let you can pretty much get them to do whatever. And that's what God is not looking for people to be. God is not looking for people to be like scared, scaredy cat Christians. Like he's looking for people to be boastful in the Lord and and stand strong on who they believe in and what they believe in, right? Like, like, you know, I'm not bashing anybody, but certain communities, right? Like, like um, again, I'm not bashing anybody, but the um the pride community. There's rainbow flags everywhere, right? Not they're not um, you know. There's no shame, right? And in fact, it's called the pride movement. They have pride in who they are and what they feel, right? Okay, another thing, like uh, the Muslim belief, like the women come all the way from, you know, whatever country, they, you know, they're coming from, and they come here in the United States and they're still dressed down to a T and all you can see is their eyes. They could be 900 million degrees outside and they still have that that whole get up on the hijab, the hijab and with the, with the dress on and everything. They're not ashamed. Why is it that you can be sitting next to somebody in class for the whole school year and not know that they believe in Jesus? And I don't talk to people. Exactly. Yeah, I don't talk to people. You don't want to sit down to nobody. <laughs> right? And you know what? I, I'm, I'm glad you said that too because I actually talk to people with the intent to find out what they believe in. It's so, it's so crazy. I don't even know why. Because I, I was never like a social butterfly where I just go out and start talking to people. But now I look to seek and build relationships with people to find out what their beliefs are. So now, like like on my job, right? Mm -hmm. This one dude just so happened to wear a t-shirt that has something about Jesus on it. I was like, yo, what's that shirt about? He's asking. He was like, oh yeah, my son went to a uh, I think he's in a Boy Scout or something like that, or a Christian uh, boys camp or something like that. I was like, yo, that was it. That was the, that was a spark of fire for me. So now I'm going around the office the whole day, like, yo, are you Christian? Are you Christian? Not, not in that sense like that, but like just through conversation, finding out what they believe in. And then, you know, and then next thing you know, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at work telling people about God. That's what it's about, bro. Sharing the word. And that's and that's that's what that's what that's what Jesus wants us to do. Share the good news that He came to save us. I'm social, but I like that. I hear you. Like, I'm, I'm social. I've always been a social person. Like, I hear you. Yeah. That knows me knows that I'm a social person. Like, yeah, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much the gist of it. Um. That was one of the third things for the week. Yes. We'll continue the rest from next week. This, these chapters are honestly really interesting. Like, I, would, I wouldn't think I would have this much fun, like, really trying to learn. Like, I really, I really cannot wait to see what chapter A got. Like, I don't, like, I'm excited to learn about the word, like, it's it's that sound weird coming out of my mouth, but it like I'm really excited to learn about the word. Like it sounds weird to you, but I know what you mean. I yeah, I was I, I was there when I first like was home. I was like, yo, I got I got, I hate reading books, bro. Even to this day, and it's like, yo, I tell people all the time, there's only one book I really like look to pick up and read, and and that's the Bible because I am 
not a reading type of guy, but I'm going to read. It's going to be that Bible. I'm going to read by choice anyway, not because I have to, but by choice. But now it's like, no, I have to read the book. Because if I want to be, you know, if I want to get closer to God, I have to read this book. It's a part of it. It's like a free reference. You have to do it. Yeah, yeah and what I, I like about it is not only I'm able to learn more, connect with God, I be having fun with it. I try to have fun with pretty much anything I do. Cause, yeah. Because once I do that, it makes me keep on wanting to do something. Because if it's straight up, if it's boring to me, I'm, that's how I lose interest in anything. If I just like do something and have a purpose behind it, but if I'm not feeling right doing it or like I don't have some type of fun in it, I, I don't, don't want to do it. Yeah. Just ask yourself, am I being an undercover Christian? <laughs> Are you an undercover Christian? You know what? I'm going to add that in the title. Are you an undercover Christian? Are you an undercover Christian? Do people know who you believe in, who you serve, who you worship? Or are you scared to say it out loud? Hey, watch, watch when I want to cog drop. I'm going to go out and be like, I'm going to scream, I love Jesus. <laughs> but the people be in their house anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, bro, that's, that's it for this week. Okay. I'm going to do the closing pair, guys, and I'm going to do my outro. Father, we thank you as we come again, God. We pray that each and every time as we sat, sit down here, able to discuss your word, that we continue to learn more about your word, continue to have a better understanding. Still while enjoying ourselves, just enjoying your word, God. I never thought I would be able to, I never thought it would have been a day where I could truly say, like, I enjoy reading your word, God, but I can say that now, and I really just love your word, God. And I pray that, I would love to, I would love for just reading your word and be able to inspire the viewers, God, be able to inspire them to get into their Bible, God, to be able to inspire them to inspire others, God. We pray that these videos that are filmed will be able to be impactful and powerful in people's lives, God. We love you. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. And so I want you to be intentional about hearing the voice of God, the leading that he's telling you, where he's leading you, what he's telling you to do today. I try to be an undercover Christian, right? Okay. This is the wrap for Bible study 12. This marks 12 weeks of consistent videos. I've uploaded 24 videos in the last 12 weeks. I'm so proud of myself, but I'm going to continue to stay consistent. Come back next week for Bible study 13, and we'll see you. We'll see you until then.